Welcome to the second part of our crypto course. In part one, we have looked at the classical ciphers, Visionaire cipher, Caesar cipher, and Playfair cipher. We have looked at the different operations that cipher algorithms use, such as substitution and transposition. And we have also looked at cryptanalysis. How do we use the letter frequency? either a one-letter word, a letter, or a diagram to decrypt ciphered text. In part two, we will look at the more modern era. We will look at symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption, and we will also look at digital certificates. So let's start. So let's start with symmetric ciphers. Now, symmetric cipher, we have said that they use the same key that is one key that is used to encrypt and the other key is used to decrypt now we divide between two variants of symmetric ciphers the first one is block cipher and the second one is stream cipher the difference is the amount of data that each algorithm encrypts and let's start with a stream cipher now a stream cipher usually encrypts a bit or one byte of a data. Since it encrypts only uh, small chunks of data, it is much faster than a block cipher. Though I should say that in today's hardware, that is barely noticeable. Let's take a use case, which is a voice over IP call or any other real-time application. Both parties, as we said, holds the same key, which is used to decrypt the data. Now, when we speak, our analog voice turns into a binary bit stream and it is being sent to the other side. So we can see the voice bit stream. We can see the uh, cryptographic key we have used one time pad. And the algorithm actually takes the two and does what we know as a XOR operation to turn the bitstream into a ciphered voice. On the other side, we have the same key. We get the ciphered voice. And now we can use the same operation, that is the XOR operation, and that is only applicable if we have the key, to turn the ciphered voice into the original plain bitstream. Block cipher on the other side encrypts the data in 64 or 128 bit chunks. When do we use block ciphers? We use them when we um, back up our data. We use them for storage. It is, as we have said, slower than stream ciphers, only due to the fact that it encrypts bigger chunks. Yet, as we have said, in today's hardware, it is barely an issue. Now, what happens when it finishes to encrypt the different chunks? It needs to aggregate them. It does so using different modes of operation. There are different modes of operation in block ciphers, CBC, EBC, and so on. We will not get into the details, but know that. When you see something like that, AES is the encryption algorithm. 128 is the key. And CBC is the mode of operation, the way that it actually aggregates everything together. Now, the following concept may be a bit confusing. When we use a 2-bit key, we have four possible values. That is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Now think of it as a table, a table that maps a plain text to a cipher text. If we're using permutations, we can actually get 24 possible values out of the four possible values. Each value is a different combination or a different permutation of the different bits. Now I'm using here only four keys, 
But trust me that when using permutation, you can get out of a two-bit key 24 possible values. That is a factorial of four. If you're using a key that is three bit, which is eight possible values, a factorial of eight is more than 40,000 values. So if we're using permutation, we can create a mapping table that will lead to an enormous key space. So let's move to my key space Python script. What is the bit key? Let's enter a two bit key. And the only possibilities are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now look at the following table and see how many combinations can be created using permutation. That is only four possible values. A factorial of 4 is 24, and we have a 24 combinations of that small 2-bit key. One side only needs to send the table itself and tell the other side at, that it uses key number 18 or key number 3 or whatever.